unmute. He's talking. He's on his phone. You need our shield? You got you. Started. So this is the problem we had the other day. We had to go on our phone. This is what my computer did. On our phone or go in the back dining in the bath? No, it should be fine because we don't have enough strength out here. Well, you got plenty of internets. Oh. Okay, truck on there. Huh? I don't know why that is. It's just that video is not coming in. I don't know what the heck's going on. There's no sound either. Well, they might not have started it yet. Maria, here, try the soup. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Megan Herencall. I'm a sanitarian with Gallatin County Environmental Health, and I have here with me Lori Christensen. She's the Director of Environmental Health. Um, and we also have Matt Kelly, our health officer, joining us today on the call. Um, Matt, do you want to say a few words? Sure. Thanks, Megan. So this is Matt Kelly. Uh, I'm having Zoom problems, so I'm calling in. I can see some of you uh, who are on video. I want to express our appreciation for those who are um, taking the time to be on this call and also express that we're, you know, the health department uh, is committed to working with you all as partners. We recognize this is a really difficult situation. It's a little bit like putting together a, a plane as we're in midair flying together. Um, so I, I'm, we're, we're committed to being patient and working with, with you all as partners. Um, and I hope you'll, you'll be patient with us as we uh, kind of unravel what is happening in really a fast moving, fast changing environment related that involves not just what's happening in West Yellowstone, but what's happening uh, also in Helena um, and, and elsewhere in the country. Um, let me start out by saying I, I, it's really important that we're working together on this because the challenge, is, the challenge ahead is really significant. Um, I don't know what's going to happen <clears throat> with regard to you know, when the gates may open in, in Yellowstone. I think that's going to be a decision that's largely made by the Park Service and the governors. Um, I know that they're interested in input from the locals and that may um, have a significant amount of influence, but I, I think it, it largely at the end of the day is a decision that's going to be made by the Park Service and, and the governors. I would, you know, I, I don't know. The other thing is I don't know is like what will happen when the when the gates reopen. I can't tell you how many cases we'll have, how many, um, what will happen. But I can, I think we do know some things uh, from, we do have some public health principles to fall back on. 
and I, and I want to I want to just take a step back and think about this in terms of the things that we do know. We do know that West Yellowstone is in in shoulder season, and and your your on residents are somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500 people um, live there on an, on an annual basis, and we know that even at operating at 50% capacity, we're likely to see that number grow. Um, so you've got you know maybe five to eight uh, visitors and and seasonal employees, <clears throat> and you. You know, even if you even at 50 percent, we're looking at a nighttime population in West Yellowstone in the seven to eight thousand person range. Um, you know, that really makes West um, go go from uh, a fairly small, um, uh, isolated um, um, town to the second largest town in Gallon County. What is concerning about reopening from a public health perspective is that we'll be bringing in thousands of visitors from all over the country during a pandemic. Um, those people will be coming in and they'll be bringing with them whatever, if they're infected, they'll be bringing the virus with them. They'll be staying in hotels, they'll be eating out um, almost uh, exclusively in, in restaurants. And then um, most of them during the day will go into the park and they'll crowd into Old Faithful and Grand Prismatic and Mammoth and all those places we all know. And there won't be a lot of social distancing because it's going to be impossible in the park. And Cam has already said his rangers aren't going to be social distancing police. And they're going to crowd together with people from Cody and from Gardner and from Jackson and from all over. And then at the end of the day, they're going to come out of the park and they're going to come back into your restaurants and your hotels. <clears throat> um, and, you're, and they're going to be served by people who, you know, many of whom my understanding is are living in pretty, pretty close quarters and maybe bunked up, uh, not just in twos, ones and twos, but in, 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 in greater numbers. All that stuff together from a public health perspective, those are ingredients for an outbreak. Those are ingredients for to have a higher number of cases, to have um, a, 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 a demand for healthcare services that currently the town is, is does not have capacity to deal with, and to have um, a demand for isolation and quarantine um, in order to stop spread of the disease that we currently do not have capacity to deal with. I can tell you we're working proactively with, with Shane Grub, uh, with Dan Sobolski, with the town council, with community health partners, with, with Bozeman Health. We had calls yesterday with FEMA and the governor's office to talk about the concerns we have and to build, um, build health care resources in West Yellowstone. Um, as well as isolation and quarantine, as and, and those healthcare services would be in the in the in the what our emphasis on is having testing and viral triage available in West Yellowstone uh, when the gates swing open. We don't have money to do that right now, but we're looking for it and we're work, working proactively with 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 your town leaders in order to find ways to make that happen. The reason I'm I'm going through all this and and I uh, is not to argue against opening the gates in West. I understand the enormous economic consequences of doing that. I recognize that. But the reason I'm telling you all this is because I want I want to I want to make sure that as the local public health department, we're doing our job in communicating that risk to all of you, and that as you go into the season, you're you're setting up your operations and you're thinking about ways to protect your staff, your families, and your customers, uh, and that's going to be tough. I, I I I've been here 10 years. I I know how busy West can get. I know how crowded it can get. I know how people pack into gift shops. How I know the demand that's going to be on all of you to serve people in your restaurants. That's going to be it's going to be a difficult season. And I so two things I want to, I want to make sure you know that we're committed to being partners with you in this. Um, we're not going to our our first impulse is education and collaboration. That's going to be our our effort first, second, and third. Um, we have some capacity to do enforcement, but right now we should be talking to each other as partners, and that's the spirit of this call. The second thing I just want you to know that there is risk involved in this. That there, this is a there's no great solution here. That 
keeping, we understand that keeping the gates closed has enormous and in, in some cases devastating economic consequences. It can ruin businesses and it can, it can really, it can really harm families. So we're really working to balance the, the, the economic demand and the economic potential here um, and do it in a way that allows, allows businesses to operate and allows West Yellowstone to get back on its feet um, and stay operating. I don't want to have, yep, I don't want to have, you know, we call Yellowstone National Park the crown jewel of the National Park Service. I don't want it to also be the coronavirus capital of the National Park Service. And so we, we have to work together in that. There's going to be significant risks. Um, and you guys are all going to be on the front line. And so our goal today is to provide time for you with our registered sanitarians, um, with our staff, and to be able to ask questions, knowing that there's a lot of uncertainty here and we're going to have to be uh, patient and cooperative with one another. That's all I have to say. Um, I'm going to stick on for a couple more minutes, but we have you're in really good hands with our with our sanitarian team. Just to let you know, I don't have any inside information about when the park might open. I'm supposed to have a call later on today with with the superintendent. Um, I, I I just don't have any insight. And again, that's that's going to be a decision that's probably above my pay grade. It's going to be the the park service making that decision. Um, that's kind of what I have to say right now. I'm going to I'm going to hang out and listen for a while. Um, but I, I want you all to know that I appreciate you taking the time to be on this call because it shows that a spirit of cooperation and a spirit of proactivity that I think we're going to need moving forward into the season. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, Matt, would you be available for a couple of questions that people may have just generally speaking? Um, either about um, what you just commented on, or uh, we also have our human services director on the line uh, who could also talk about testing capacity. If there's questions about that, I, we have a really engaged audience here. So if there are questions um, for either Matt or Tracy, our human services director, um, feel free to, to ask them. Um, now at this time, and if there are no questions, we'll move into our um, next session with regards to license establishment specific details. Does anyone have questions for Matt or Tracy? I just like to thank you guys and Matt, you did a great job on that. And I think that really helped us all to understand where we're at at this gate. I, I understand it clearly. I've been here almost 29 years and it's going to be a difficult summer. Thank you, Matt, and all of you for all your hard work. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate it. What what establishment are you with? I have Bullwinkles on Main Street. Okay. Restaurant. Go Packers. Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another story. <laughs> yep, yep. Anybody else have questions for Matt? Um, are I, uh, this is Sue Ann Chow, Terranova Cabins. I have a, a question. Um, Yellowstone Park, is, there is entrance, and I'm sorry, I'm just kind of new to the area, so um, forgive me for my <laughs> not clear knowledge of all the, the whole area, but you can access the park from the Wyoming area, is that correct? Is, there's a Wyoming entrance up by Glacier. <laughs> There's there's a Wyoming entrance on on two sides. You can come in kind of from the south from Jackson and the Grand Teton National Park. You can also come in from Cody, and there's two entrances on the north side, um, one at at Silvergate and one at one at Gardner. Uh, am I missing any there? I, I can't think of any that I'm missing there. Okay. Well, I guess my question is is that if if the state of Montana is not opening the parks area, how does that work with um, other entrances that are in other states, such as Wyoming? That's, that's all to be determined. And I think that's an ongoing discussion between the superintendent and the governors right now. Um, there, there is, um, uh, it, I think everything is on the table right now. I don't know how that will work. I think that, um, there is a genuine desire to find a way to open all the gates in a way that is responsible, but I don't, I don't have much more to tell you than that. And it's really going to be a conversation mostly between the governors and the, and the superintendent, I think. 
Okay. I mean, I, I am assuming that there's it would be, well, you don't have this answer, but what, you know, obviously where I'm heading and what comes to my mind is if Wyoming opens and Montana doesn't, how do you prevent people from coming in from another uh, state, other location and, and keeping them out of the Montana side? At the end of the day, the Park Service has control of those gates, so they're going to be able to decide whether or not those gates open or not. That's kind of the, the main locus of control. I know that Cam, the superintendent, has reached out to local health officers, and he's also reached out to, um, I know he's been talking to the governors. And so, uh, you know, I think that's just a, a an ongoing discussion, and it's going to be a complex one. Okay, thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Matt, um, for joining us this morning. And um, if there are no other questions for Matt, we are going to move into the next section of our presentation. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Megan. Oh. All right, so I'm actually seeing a few people like names that I recognize from um, either the hotel and public accommodation webinar that we did last week or the food um, for retail restaurants and bars as well. So if you guys have seen either of those webinars, this is going to be just both of those combined and then a quick overview of that. Um, so it's going to be a lot of uh, the same material that you've already seen. So that's why we kind of wanted to open up now to question and questions and um, answer those questions for you now before we get into um, that same uh, webinar. So if you've already seen those webinars, you've already got all the information that I'm about to provide for you today. So if you guys do have any additional questions right now and you wanna ask those before you hop off, um, feel free to do that. And then if not, I will go through the PowerPoint slides and we'll discuss the reopening um, phase one guidelines for hotels and um, retail food and bar. And then we'll also talk a little bit about um, outfitters and um, some other random questions you guys might have. Hey. Megan, I have one question if I could. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so what's been happening in the first three days open here is and that we have customers coming in and they say, well, why are you doing this? Why is this happening here? We've been somewhere else and it's not happening there. Now we're trying to go by the rules and the regulations and if someone else is in, how are we to explain that to the customer? Because they just basically go, well, well, we're not gonna hang out here because we'd rather go somewhere else because they're not going with the rules. And if we don't go by the rules right now, CAM is not gonna let this gate open. Because if we can't handle our locals and the people traveling through town, then he's just going to say we can't handle tours. Absolutely, Jackie. Um, thank you for following the phase one rules because you're absolutely right. We have to do phase one right if we're ever going to move forward. Um, and we actually have a sanitarian down in West in the field today, popping in and doing some check-ins with all of the um, establishments that she notices that are open and operating. So she will be able to provide that guidance and that education to the establishments that are not following phase one. Um, hopefully it's because they aren't fully aware of what the rules are um, and she'll be there to help uh, guide them on what they need to be doing. So we do have somebody out in the field in West today um, and hopefully that'll help with that situation. Right, thanks, Megan. Yeah, and you can always give us a call and just give us a heads up on which establishments might not be um, following those guidelines because we really do want to make sure everybody's doing this the same way. Otherwise, there's no point in in following them, you know, because right. we, we have to do move right. on. We can't yeah, move on if nobody's going to follow the rules. Exactly. Thank you. You can always give us a, a heads up on that too, and we'll reach out to them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Megan. Are there any other questions out there? Megan, can you hear me? This is Joanne. Yes. Hi. Um, so, sorry, my parrot just talked to you. Um, so, at the end of the last session that we watched someone brought up a question about our shopping district um, and if we're going to have to require our employees as they come in to have to go shopping in Bozeman where are there are the higher COVID numbers rather than down in Rexburg is that something okay. that we're pushing 
you're asking the question if you're um if west yellowstone residents can go shopping in idaho because it's likely closer than bozeman um, yeah it's closer and it actually has a lower number of cases so it just seems safer also right um looks like lori is going to answer that one for us she's looking through the faqs that the state put out yeah, so that we did get some clarification on that. And if um, you're traveling outside of the state for essential business and returning, uh, so essential business meaning um, needing to go uh, provide, and get groceries for your establishment, then um, you do not need to quarantine. Um, uh, your, your employees do not need to quarantine upon their um, upon their return back to Montana. Um, it's really meant, um, so that answers that question hopefully for you, that if you needed to go outside of the region to get a, do essential business um, for essential purposes, then you do not have to quarantine upon your return back to Montana. Great, thank you, that answered that. Yep, great. All right, any other questions for us before we hop onto the slides? Um, so if you've already seen them, feel free to uh, log off now, um, or you can just get a refresher and, and listen again if you would like to do that as well. All right, Shane, can you give me a thumbs up? Do you see just the PowerPoint? Perfect. All right, so these slides are going to provide you with some guidance and just um, really go over the reopening directive. And the purpose of this webinar is to offer direction and provide a framework for you guys to open safely during phase one. And we just, we understand that every establishment is different. So um, it's going to look different for each uh, unique operation that you guys have, but we're, we just want to be a resource and help you guys um, get through this and we're all in it together. So um, this is the reopening directive, um, the phased approach that Governor Bullock put out April 24th. So hopefully this looks familiar to you all. If you have not seen the reopening directive or um, these pages don't look familiar, I'll show you at, at the end of the slide um, how to find the directive online and you should definitely read through it all because um, there's guidelines for all individuals, employers, and general businesses and then it's specific as well um, to different business types and everybody needs to be aware of what these guidelines are. So this first one, um, obviously we all know the virus is still in our county and it's still dangerous and taking the lives of Montanans. Um, so we all need to do our part as an individual, and these are the requirements that the governor set out for each one of us to do. So that's wash your hands, obviously, um, as often as possible. Use hand sanitizer when you can't wash your hands with soap and water. Avoid touching your face. Um, sneeze and cough into your elbow or a tissue. Wash your hands afterwards. Um, disinfect frequently um, all of the high touch surfaces, and then strongly consider using a face covering when in public, especially when you can't meet six feet social distancing, and then do not go out in public when you're sick with any um, COVID symptoms or other symptoms as well. If, you, if you're sick, just stay home, please. Okay, so this is also specific to all individuals, and this is specific to the vulnerable individuals that we wanted to touch on. Um, vulnerable individuals during phase one are still advised to stay home right now. Um, so if you have any staff members that meet the definition of a vulnerable individual, it's highly recommended that they still stay home and they're not out in public working at this time. Um, they're at higher risk and we wanna try and keep them as safe as we can. Um, all individuals still need to avoid gathering in groups of 10 or more, um, and then utilize social distancing in all, all, all times when you're in public. Um, so this is phase one for all business types. So hotels, restaurants, in any type of business that you are, you have to follow these guidelines. So you have to have um, a health assessment uh, conducted for all employees at the beginning of each shift. All, all businesses need to um, close their waiting areas if they can't keep the six feet social distancing. Um, so if you have a large waiting area, you can use floor markings and just make sure you're doing the six feet social distancing so your customers are um, able to uh, uh, adhere to that. 
and then um, all establishments need to have a reduction in capacity in their establishment and um, are requested to encourage for reservation appointments before customers come into the facility. Um, this is specific to all employers. So employers must develop and implement appropriate policies that adhere to social distance, distancing requirements, um, symptom screening, temperature checks, sanitation, and disinfecting. So you guys as an employer must be monitoring your workforce um, and making sure that they are actually doing symptom checks and that they're actually following the guidelines that are out. Um, and then right now this is specific to restaurant, bar, brewery, all phases throughout the reopening. Um, restaurants, bars, breweries are going to have to have a specific cleaning plan implemented. All employees are going to have to be trained on that. Um, they're going to have to ad adhere to the um, specific requirements that we'll go into in more detail. Um, but everything that a customer uses is going to have to be clean and sanitized after that customer leaves. So all tables, chairs, um, you know, dishes, all of that, menus have to be clean and sanitized between each customer. And then table items cannot be on the table. So you need to remove like um, napkins and salt and pepper shakers, all those things. There should be nothing on the table um, because you're gonna have to remove all of that and clean and sanitize between each customer. Growlers and refillable drinks and containers have to be clean and sanitized before you can do that as well. Um, so specific to phase one, we will go into a little more detail. Um, we have all of these guidelines in a package that we've put together um, and I'll go through that and show you where you can find that as well. So this is the retail um, food and bars uh, reopening guideline package that we, the Gallatin City County Health Department put together for you guys to utilize to help you be successful in phase one. This package is actually um, great for hotels, motels and bed and breakfasts as well. So um, included in this package is right here, a list of everything. So we have created an employee health agreement specific for the COVID-19 symptoms. Um, so all of your staff can follow their employee health and sign and agree that they will um, self-monitor. Uh, and then that could be your way of creating a guideline for them to uh, self-monitor before each shift. And then facility plan for cleaning and sanitizing is the next one. You guys have to have a cleaning plan implemented so you guys can utilize this as your cleaning plan for restaurants and hotels. This goes for both of you guys. Um, this next one is specific just to restaurants and bars, breweries, distilleries. Um, it's a facility plan for social distancing and it actually just outlines all the directives, um, all the directive requirements for phase one. So that's specific to the retail food. Um, and then the next ones, COVID training log, log and a symptom check log are just things you guys can utilize to ensure that you are actually um, monitoring your workforce. And then we also providing some signs uh, for your front doors to remind customers of what phase one is. Um, so this package that we put together doesn't need to be signed and returned to us, um, but we put it together so you guys can, um, as employers can follow the requirements of the reopening directive and just to help you guys meet those requirements. Right here is the employee health agreement. So we specifically outlined all the symptoms of COVID-19 and the CDC did update those. So obviously we know coughing regularly, difficulty breathing and fever, but now it's also if you're feeling feverish, um, if you have muscle aches, chills, sore throat, headache, or a loss of taste or smell are all considered symptoms of COVID as well. And then your employees need to adhere to the individual's guidelines of hand washing, avoiding touching their face, utilizing a face covering. So having them sign this will be a great way to go over it with your staff and ensure that they know they need to do these things. Um, so must all of your employees sign this? Again, no, but you guys as employers must ensure that you're monitoring your workforce and that your workforce is self-monitoring their temperature and symptoms every um, day before shift. And health assessments right here for general businesses must be done. So this helps you guys meet that requirement. Um, here's the facility plan for cleaning and sanitizing and disinfecting. And it does uh, outline it's specific to bars, breweries, and distilleries. But like I said, it can work for hotels, motels as well, public accommodations. Um, and I know you guys are all familiar with clean and sanitize, but now we want to in 
incorporate disinfecting regularly as well. And disinfecting is just a stronger concentration than sanitizing. So you're not gonna want to disinfect your food contact surfaces. Um, still use your food safe sanitizer for those countertops and dishes. However, let's disinfect with a higher strength um, concentration on our doorknobs, chair backs, um, bathrooms, and light switches, all of those other areas that are highly touched. Um, and one you can find all of the um, approved EPA registered products for disinfecting on their EPA website, but one that most everybody has on hand is chlorine. And in order to disinfect, you'll wanna use one third cup of chlorine per one gallon of water. Again, don't use that on your food contact surfaces. Um, so you guys can sign this and that can be the plan that you decide to implement in your facility if you would like to utilize this. Um, so you don't have to necessarily sign this specific plan. Um, you can come up with your own and just use that as a guideline if you'd like, but you guys do need to implement a cleaning plan and all of your employees must be trained on the proper sanitation procedures. Um, okay, now this is specific just to um, restaurants, bars, breweries, distilleries, retail food. So if you are public accommodation and you have a breakfast, then this will actually adhere to you as well. So um, right here is everything we copied straight out of the phase one reopening directive. So what I'm about to go through, you guys must adhere to. Um, capacity must be limited to 50% of normal operating capacity. So what you guys typically operated at before COVID, um, then you need to cut that in half and be operating at half that. Tables should only be limited to six people. So you need to split groups up if they're larger than six. Um, and then your six feet social distancing between groups or tables must be provided. So if people are sitting at a table, um, they need to be six feet away from other people sitting at other tables. So you're gonna have to increase table spacing, remove tables, or just put like a sign on the table and mark them as closed. Um, you can provide a physical barrier between tables um, in order to meet that distancing, a barrier will work. So back-to-back -back booth seating is allowed because it does provide adequate separation. Um, Self-service operations cannot be operating at this time at all. So no salad bars, no buffets, um, and self-service like um, counters where you would have straws, cups, hot sauces, condiments, all of that has to be in the back. There can be no self-service right now at all. The only type of self-service that is allowed is when a customer wants to come grab a cup from, a, from the back or the bar, they have to ask staff for a cup and they can go fill up their cup with coffee or with um, soda from the soda machine. Um, but that is the extent to what self-service is allowed right now. So um, one thing to reiterate is you can't just give somebody like a bottle of ketchup or a hot sauce bottle. You have to pour that into like a portion cup and it has to be either clean and sanitized between each customer or like a single use one where they throw away. You can't just give them a, a, a ketchup bottle to let them use and that, that's not allowed right now. So, um, oops. Um, facilities also need to be uh, closing at 11.30. So have all of your patrons out by 11.30 p.m. And obviously if you're a brewery, you need to follow your guidelines on when you're supposed to close. Um, growlers, refillable and reusable containers must be clean and sanitized between each guest. So if you guys wanted to leave like a pitcher of beer with a guest, you can do that. But um, once they're done with that pitcher, you have to clean and sanitize it before it can be used again. Um, same with like coffee, coffee pots. Um, you don't wanna just like go around refilling coffee mugs um, to your customers because it's possible that that could become contaminated. So drink refills are not allowed. You have to always give them a clean glass or use single use cups. And um, menus have to be clean and sanitized between each customer. Um, a good way to do that is utilizing like a whiteboard and a sign with your menu items on it. Use printable menus um, that are laminated so you can actually wipe them down with sanitizer between each customer. Um, do disposable menus that are single use or have them look on your website um, and look up your menu that way. But you have to have an alternative way of um, doing menus at this time. And then this is extremely important and probably the hardest one, sitting or standing at bars or counters is not allowed. So you can have no bar service at this time. Um, you have to bring all of your customers 
drinks or food to a table. They can only be served at a table. Um, and then gaming machines, if you have a casino or gaming machines in your facility, you have to be separating those so that the people sitting at the machines are still um, six foot social distancing. So the rule says the machine should be seven foot center to center. Um, and then if you can't do that, you need to just mark the machine as closed. And you have to clean and sanitize machines between each customer. If you guys cannot meet any of these guidelines or requirements, then you should not be operating in phase one. Um, we went over the waiting areas. If they can't meet the six feet social distancing, they need to be closed. Encourage customers to call for a reservation. You must have a cleaning plan implemented and employees must be trained on um, COVID symptoms and self-monitoring and proper sanitation practices. Um, so that is the gist of all the phase one requirements for retail food and bars. Um, and then here's just a few a random question. Can I serve food at the counter? That's a no. Um, food and drinks must be served to a customer at a table. We um, have, have a hard time with this one. And then we have some um, extra resources for you guys. This is a training log if you want to utilize it to make sure your staff has been trained on all the new rules. You can print this off um, and use that. We also have this COVID-19 symptom check for employees. So this is a great one to make sure um, that your employees are doing their self-monitoring before each shift and you can utilize this as well. Um, another question we get, do my establishments, servers and customers have to wear masks? Um, although not required, use of a face covering is recommended for staff when social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. So face coverings are highly recommended, um, but they are not required. And we will talk about face coverings a little bit now. Um, so obviously here in all individuals, the, guide, the guidelines and the directives say strongly consider utilizing a face covering when in public. Um, and we wanna talk about face coverings versus face masks. Um, face masks are those like N95 surgical masks. Um, if you have these already in your possession, feel free to utilize them, but we are not um, advising anybody go out and search for bulk supply of these. We really um, are already in short supply and we need to save those for our first responders and our healthcare staff. So please, if you don't have um, those already in your supply, let's go with the face coverings. Um, they're super easy to make and you can even just use a bandana, for example, but there's also all these tutorials out on how to do like a no-sew face covering. Um, and then also face coverings are not always great if they're not used appropriately. So like think about glove use. If you're not using your gloves properly, then they become more of a source of contamination than a barrier um, or a sanitation measure. So uh, common mistakes when wearing face coverings, people don't wash their hands before they put them on and then they're touching their face the entire time readjusting their mask. That is just contaminating their face and their hands um, when they do that. So let's go through a quick um, YouTube video that shows us how easily your uh, face covering can contaminate you. All right. Hope you guys all could see that. Um, 
Um, so it's just a good demonstration on, on how a face covering really can become a source of contamination. So always wash your hands before you put it on, avoid touching it once it's on. And um, then it, and you have your kitchen staff utilize those because they're typically in a sh close proximity and a close contact is considered somebody within six feet for 30 minutes. So your kitchen staff back there work in a shift together, typically within six feet of each other for hours should be utilizing those masks, uh, face coverings, sorry. Um, so here are some printable resources that you guys can put on your um, doors or your uh, front entrances if you'd like. Stop, stay home when, when, when you're sick, just to remind customers not to come into your establishment and also phase one reopening guidelines. So like phase one means social distancing and staying home when you're sick, washing your hands just to remind people like, yeah, we're open, but it's phase one and we still have these um, guidelines to adhere to. Then there's the self-monitoring guideline as well. And that one's really great if people aren't sure like how to self-monitor what they need to be looking for. Um, so now this is getting a little more specific to hotels, motels. Um, public accommodations have obviously been allowed to remain operational throughout this entire emergency. Um, but you guys still need to be following the guidelines set for all general businesses, employers, and individuals. Um, and then everyone who travels to Montana must still self-quarantine um, for the 14 days. So those who are coming from out of state need to be doing the self-quarantining. Um, and then some re reminders for hotel staff in response to COVID. Guest rooms, if you guys have any dishes that you provide in your guest rooms, those need to be washed, rinsed, and sanitized after each guest, all of the dishes do. So maybe take out dishes if you're providing dishes right now and only provide like the bare minimum that you think would be necessary. Coffee pots um, and coffee machines need to be sanitized between each guest. Um, and then ice buckets. I know a lot of you guys provide ice buckets with like a plastic liner. Um, please wash, rinse, and sanitize that ice bucket. People don't always use the liners and even if they did, the outside of the bucket can still become contaminated and that's kind of a food contact surface as well. So let's wash, rinse, sanitize those. Um, housekeeping staff should sanitize all commonly touched surfaces. So when they're going into a room, they need to be sanitizing down everything, light switches, door handles, chair backs, TV remotes, nightstands, alarm clocks, anywhere um, a guest would touch. So even like the AC or heater controls, have them wipe that down with a sanitizer. And then consider um, washing your drapes and shampooing your carpets more often than you typically would. Um, and then we, we, just are we just want to remind you that hotel staff may not always be informed if they've had a positive case stay in their hotel room. I mean, we have asymptomatic cases and then when somebody does end up getting sick, it might have been days after, but they were still contagious when they stayed at your hotel. So it takes a while for that trace back to happen and for us to let you know that that's happened. So you might not know until days later and you've already cleaned the room. So always clean and disinfect rooms, assuming all guests may have been positive for COVID. So following the CDC guidelines on how to clean and disinfect um, when COVID was in a facility is great. CDC has some awesome guidelines out there for you guys, but always advise your housekeeping staff to wear gloves when they enter a room, have them put on a clean pair of gloves and um, once they're done cleaning that room, they need to discard those gloves and wash their hands immediately. Um, wash any surfaces that are visibly dirty. Have them wash it with soap and water before they sanitize or disinfect because that sanitizer and disinfectant is not going to be effective unless the surface is clean. And then the EPA approved products. Um, anything that you guys are using for like your sanitizers are probably on that EPA approved product um, list, but go ahead and double check to make sure it is. And then again, you can use chlorine and chlorine can be used for sanitizing and disinfecting. And I just went over this earlier, but sanitizing is one teaspoon per one gallon of water of chlorine and disinfecting is one third cup of chlorine per one gallon of water. And then I have these links on the CDC or to the CDC website on how to disinfect when a positive COVID case is in your establishment. Um, additional things to remember, Hotel staff isn't technically required to wash each top blanket or throw blanket between every guest that stays. And so those, co those comforters that don't get washed between each guest, you should be washing everything that's in the room right now between each guest, no matter if you have the clean sheet folded over it or not. Wash everything um, right now. Really make sure all of your laundry staff 
have their bins clearly labeled for dirty versus clean. That would be really bad if they put clean in a dirty laundry bin container. Always advise your laundry staff to be wearing gloves when handling dirty linen. Um, tell them not to shake out the linen. They need to remove their gloves and immediately wash their hands once they're done with dirty before they do any other task. Um, and then you must have a hand sink in your laundry room. That sink must always have hot running water, soap, and paper towels so they can be washing their hands throughout their shift. And then provide hand sanitizer in the laundry room as well so they can utilize that if they'd like. Um, and then always wash on the warmest or hottest water setting that's appropriate for that, the linen and dry on high heat. Um, and then one thing to just remember, dirty laundry can be washed um, if, or dirty laundry from an ill person can still be washed with other people's items. So if you did have a positive COVID case or you're worried about that, um, all of the laundry will be effectively cleaned and sanitized throughout the cycle. Um, and then the hotel lobby and common area, if you can minimize your upholstered furniture, um, place floor markings for social distancing. Um, so when people come in and they're waiting, they're still six feet apart provide hand sanitizer in multiple locations for guests to utilize, and the bathrooms that are um, available to all people throughout the day. Disinfect that regularly throughout the day. Every few hours, wear gloves when you're cleaning the bathroom, wash your hands immediately after you're done cleaning. Maybe post some signage in the bathroom to um, remind guests to wash their hands and use a paper towel to turn off the faucet or open the door. Um, and then I just went wanted to show this again. So for hotels, you guys can utilize this package. Um, it's just this one, it, this one document um, is specific to food and bars, but the other ones are still great for you guys to utilize. Um, and then again, a question, I'm an out of state visitor. Do I need to quarantine? Yes, technically they do need to quarantine for the 14 days. Um, oh, so if I travel to the state, for work-related reasons, then you are exempt. Um, so if you're if you have people that are traveling from out of state for work-related reasons, they they only need to quarantine when they're not at work. So they're allowed to go to work still, but then once they're not at work, they should be quarantining. Um, out of state visitor, do people staying at vacation rentals need to self-quarantine? Yes, any visitor from another state um, traveling to Montana for non-work-related purposes does need to do the 14-day quarantine. Um, private campgrounds can operate as long as they comply with the six feet social distancing requirements. And again, self-quarantining is still a thing. Um, Montana reopening guide for um, guiding and outfitters. Guides and outfitters may now offer services as long as they're adhering to the social distancing and sanitation protocols. Um, and then as well as being consistent with the out of state quarantine travel restrictions. Um, what to expect, we kind of went over this already, but health department, which is us, the sanitarians of Gallatin County are making a presence in the community. We're going out and about doing some check-ins with all of the um, food establishments that we see operating. We're just popping in, saying hi, um, providing education and guidance when needed, and just making sure that everybody understands phase one rules and are adhering to them, as well as um, re providing reassurance and guidance. Um, and then other community partners will be utilized throughout this process as well. Um, so we have our Healthy Gallatin website has all of these printable resources that we just went through and I'll show you guys um, how, oh I should actually. Hey Chris, is that going to the Healthy Gallatin website? Can you give me a thumbs up? Or Jackie? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so go to healthygallatin.org, scroll down, click here for coronavirus page, and then you can scroll down again and we can go to printable resources. And here you'll find um, all of the phase one reopening printable resources specific to establishment type. So retail food and bar, and then you'll see um, we split up the document that we went through into the cover page and the checklist employee health agreement all of these things and then all the posters are listed here as well 
also the webinar that I did um, specific to Retail Food and Bar with all the question and answers are also posted here. So you guys can go ahead and watch that again. Same with the hotel. Um, the public accommodations webinar is there and um, all the stuff that's specific to hotels is there. So this is great. Um, and then reopening will take you to where you can find um, the directive and all the guidelines here for all phases. Here's the governor's reopening directive. Um, go ahead and read through that if you haven't. You really need to know that um, the rules and requirements in there for you guys. Um, so I'll go back to my slides here. Um, COVID19.mt.gov also has some really great uh, resources. It'll take you to the State Department of Public Health and Human Services website or uh, the Joint Information Center is where you can find all of the past directives and all of that information. Um, CDC.gov is awesome. And then if you guys have additional questions or concerns, the Gallatin City County Health Department is staffing the COVID-19 call center um, every day from eight to five. So that phone number is 5480123, or you can email us at callcenter at readygallatin.com. And there's always gonna be a sanitarian working or a public health nurse working that as well. Um, so do you guys have, I'm gonna open it back up to questions. And do we have any questions about all of that or anything related to COVID-19 right now? Um, Megan, I got a question. This is Barack in West Yellowstone. Um, pools. So you know, the frequently asked questions, it says our pools are open uh, with 50% capacity. Um, but with the quarantine still in place, um, and how do we keep the out-of-town guests out versus a Montana resident that's here? I mean, this is going to cause a lot of confusion and question and consternation for lack of better words uh good question brock so you brought up the um the faqs mentioned that pools and public accommodations could open i will be very honest with you this was um very challenging for us um given that we have a local rule in place as well as the governor's directive that says that pools must remain closed so there is definitely a conflict um, within those rules that we are working really closely to um, try and tease out the details and adjust to that. So when you're talking about whether or not uh, your pool should be open in your establishment, I would say at this point in time, um, pools should remain closed based on the fact that we have in our local rule that pools need to remain closed. Um, so that might help eliminate some um, challenge with uh, you trying to manage whether or not those individuals who are quarantining or need to quarantine uh, have access to your pool. I hope that helps answer your question, Brock. Yeah, so I guess the, the follow-up to that would be is then, are, are you guys gonna be working towards a direction where we can open this up? I mean, a pool area with the chlorine, the bromine, and everything we have should be almost really one of the safer places a person could be for the most part, other than social distancing? Yeah, I understand. So I can uh, address that as well. Um, we intend, as soon as we get additional um, information and guidance um, on this particular topic, uh, intend to have the Board of Health meet as soon as possible. We have to meet public, um, public notice requirements. Uh, we're looking for a early next week Board of Health meeting. Um, either Tuesday or most likely Wednesday uh, to have the board convene and review the rule um, and potentially amend it um, with the new guidance that we've been getting from the state. Okay. Perfect. Great. Any other questions? I yeah. have one question. Um, if you have a kitchen unit Obviously, it has dishes and cups and um, pots and pans. 
If that unit also has a dishwasher running all the dishes between guests for the dishwasher on the sanitized mode that's in the dishwasher, would that suffice or do you have to do the three dipping method? Um, it, the dishwasher should be fine. I still would recommend having um, a sanitized step. So if you could like at least provide your housekeeping guests with a, a little plastic bin that they can bring and just put bleach water in it and they can sanitize the dishes afterwards. Um, I would recommend that. Uh, however, those dish machines should be washing at a long enough um, cycle with hot enough water to meet the sanitizing requirements. Um, again, who knows how old the dish machines are, how great they work. So I always recommend sanitizing. Yeah, the one I have is a new one and it actually has a sanitizing cycle on it. So you okay. that cycle would work? It should, it should work. Okay, but using the bleach water is the better solution to that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Patty. We have a question in the chat box. Does the burden of proof for the 14 day quarantine lay on the business or the guest concerned about a liability for it? Yeah, um, thanks Shane. So the 14 day quarantine is a individual responsibility. So if you guys aren't required to be ensuring that every guest that checks into your establishment is following those quarantine, quarantine guidelines, um, the best you can do is inform them that that is a requirement and uh, it, then it, the onus is on the individual. Go ahead, Chris. Any other questions out there? Uh, this is Mike Jackson from the uh, Mountainside KOA. Just one question on uh, the uh, counter service. We have a pizzeria that only operates in the summer. We're going to at least start up with only takeaway service, no sit down service. I can still hand them the boxed pizza at the counter. I mean, that's where they order, that's where they walk away. No one eats at the counter, never has. Is that correct? Yeah, Mike, that's, that is correct. Um, just make sure that when they're waiting in line for ordering that they are doing their six feet social distancing. We, we will have six foot markings and signs. That's absolutely. Okay, thanks. Awesome. Perfect, thanks, Mike. Yeah, this is Chris, I have a question. Um, you know the flyers and posters that you re recommend that we put on the, you know, the windows of our establishment, do you recommend we put those in the cabins, each cabin unit as well, or just where they check in? Um, that's up to you. If you wanna utilize them in the cabins, feel free to do so. Um, we just wanted to provide some handouts for you guys so that you guys could put something on the window to tell people like, hey, we're still in phase one. You still need to be making sure you're doing these things. And so we just provided those for you guys to utilize them. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Do you guys have any other questions out there? Okay, so it looks like um, there's no more questions at this time. If you guys do think of any questions that we didn't answer today, um, feel free to call the call center. Again, that phone number is 548-0123. And there should always be um, a sanitarian working that or a public health nurse. So somebody will be able to answer those questions for you. Um, and with that, I am going to go ahead and log off, but thank you all for joining us today. And um, good luck. Stay safe. What was Megan? that number again? Oh, the phone number is 548-0123. I was going to say, Megan, Lori, thank you for taking the time to have another class for us today. It's good with you to remember where we need to be. And Lori, thank you for uh, giving me a sample mask the other night when I was up there talking with you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So you guys uh, will see you out in the field and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care.